so for this segment, we're going to go ahead and we are going to paint the yellow flower. So what we're going to do is we are going to start by, I'm just going to make sure I've got all my stuff set here. We're going to start by drawing out where we want our flower. So I'm going to have it just coming in the corner and then all of this space here is going to be petals. And we're just going to have a little bit of a background back here. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw out our space. So just taking my pencil, I'm just going to sketch real lightly. Just like this. So we've got a quarter of a circle. Just like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw these kind of little petals here. And when I draw these, I'm drawing kind of like that rainbow shape. It's easier for me to turn my canvas when I, as I draw them. So that way, they're all even and they all go the right angle. It's very easy, what I've noticed, it's very easy. When you're drawing a flower, if this is my canvas here, I've noticed that it's very easy to take your petals and make them all come to the same spot. We think that they all need to start at this spot when really we need to go around that whole inside. So the way that we want to do that is we're going to take our line and I'm going to start behind this petal and I'm going to bow out just a little bit and I'm going to go right to the corner here. Just like that. So I've got it right to the corner. Now instead of meeting here and starting again and coming out this way, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the top of this petal. It's going to go right off my board, so I'm not going to make a point here. I'm just going to come over just a smidge because it's going right off my board. This is a giant flower. I'm going to follow my curve down and my spacing is going to come to the edge of each of these little rainbow pieces pretty much or they can be in the center but you kind of want to keep them a little bit consistent. So then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring this petal all the way across this way and again it's going to come right off the board here. right here. You can kind of reshape as you want. I think I want to make this petal a little bit bigger now. And I can very easily erase right on this canvas. So don't be afraid to do that. And then I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to find the top of this petal. And I'm going to come over here. So again, right at that edge, I'm going to turn my canvas to make it a little bit easier on myself. I'm going to go right to that edge again. And if you notice, these points are kind of at the same spot. If you were to draw a circle right here, kind of hit the same spots. So I'm going to start my next petal right here. And then again, come out here. And now this one is one petal over here. So that is our road map. So we've got the center of our petal, or the center of our flower, I'm sorry, our smaller petals, our larger petals. And if you want to make these petals thinner, you can make as many or as few as you want. That's up to you. But I do have a little bit of background space here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and paint my background. I'm going to paint it green. And so again, I'm going to mix my colors on my plate. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take my biggest brush, make sure it's nice and cleaned off. And I'm going to take a little bit of my blue, put it in a little pile here, take a little bit of my yellow, more yellow here. Just 
just like this. Got a nice green. I think I want to darken it just a little bit, so I'm going to take just a touch of black. I didn't take a lot because black goes very, very far. I just want to darken it just a little bit. And see how that just kind of changed just slightly. And that's what I like right there. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. I've got my flat side right here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to kind of give those petals a little outline. Like that. And I'm going to come back and do the same thing right here. Remember the order of which we paint things in is going to be important. Again, because when I want to paint these petals, I want them, I want this green part to be nice and dry. So I'm going to make sure I don't paint the petals next so that they don't blend and mix in a way that I don't want them to. So I've got that area filled in. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing over here. Just like this. Remember to fill all the white space. Remember, if you've got those thick lines of paint, make sure that you spread them out nice and even. That's going to help these things to dry faster, which will make it easier for you to move along in your painting. It's different when you're doing like an abstract painting or something like that, but for the purpose that we're doing here, we want everything to dry so that we can have some good solid colors. So I'm just covering this space. Now when you see, you can tell that I'm having a hard time here. So I always want to make sure, if I can tell that I'm really pushing down on my brush, it just means that I don't have enough paint. If you really hear it start to scratch, it means your brush is not wet enough with paint. And it's time to reload. And we've got one more little spot right here. Just like that. Okay. Debating if I want one more right here. I can always add that in if I decide to. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clean out my brush. So again, I'm going to make sure that I tap it around on the bottom of this cup. That's going to really get my color out. When I pick it up, I'm going to wipe it on the side of my cup and I can already see how much of that green is out. Just give it one more little rinse off here and then dry it out because we want to make sure that we have it ready for the next time. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to make brown. So we are going to make brown for the center here. And the way that we're going to make brown we're going to think of our color palette here. And if we think of the color wheel, so you've got blue and yellow make green, and green and red make purple. And red and yellow make orange. So I know you're thinking, what does it have to do with brown? So we've got our color wheel here going, our color palette here. So what we need to do is we need to take opposite colors on the color wheel. So opposite colors are going to be like blue and orange. So we're going to take some blue, and then we need a little bit of yellow because yellow and red make orange. We're going to go ahead and mix this together. And you can see it's starting to mix and it's looking like I need some more yellow in here.
I've got a nice little mix here. Got a little more yellow. And we've got some brown. So what I'm going to do is I've got this medium brush going right now. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in this circle here. Just like this. And notice how I'm tapping this. It's going to give me just a little bit more texture here because we don't have a flat flower. So I'm just getting some texture here. And what I can do to make it look a little more rounded in 3D, you can tap just a little bit of white kind of around the edge here. And you want to do it in kind of a rainbow shape. So it's following this line here. And then you can tap a little bit, and again, black goes really far, so we can tap a little bit of black on this side. Just a little bit. And you've got your inside done. You're gonna go ahead and rinse that brush off really, really good. And then while it's still wet, we want to get lots of those colors off, but while it's still wet, we can even take just a little bit of yellow, mix it into that brown just a smidge, and just for fun. We can kind of add that in the center here. Like that. Go ahead and rinse off that brush completely. And then what we're going to do, we're going to do something pretty simple here. We're going to, oh, my brush is still wet. We're going to take this yellow, and we're going to go in. Let's be, let's be easy about this. Let's take our smallest brush, dip it into our yellow, so you're going to, you're going to roll it into that yellow to get it nice and loaded, and those bristles are going to stick together like that. And we're going to give ourselves a nice outline because that's going to make our space easier to fill in. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just using yellow for this. What's easy about this is to find a starting spot, go all the way, find an ending spot and lift off that brush. Spot, glide along, lift off. Starting spot, glide along, lift off. Now I had a thick line of paint there, so I'm going to make sure that I spread that out really good. And then we're going to find our starting spot, glide along, go right off the page. I see another drip coming through here, so I'm going to make sure to pay attention to those. I don't want any drips all over our canvas. And then I'm going to rinse off that brush. There we go. So now I've got this medium brush loaded with yellow. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to fill in these spaces. I'm not going to tap as much as I don't need the texture on this one. Petals typically are going to be smoother, so I'm just going to fill them in just like this. And 
Now remember, for these spaces, I don't have to fill both sides of my brush. It's easy just to dip it in. But I'm not going back and forth and back and forth because they're small spaces. So I'm just going to go ahead and use just this side of my brush and not worry too much. So I've got these spaces filled in. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take just my yellow and just make a V and then come down on my pencil line. So make a V and come down on my pencil line. Now if you can see that pencil line through that yellow, an easy way to get rid of it depending on how much it bothers you, is to kind of scrub it. And that'll kind of blend it. Kind of helps shade your flower too. Stuff like that doesn't tend to bother me, but if it does, this is what you can do. So then I'm gonna go ahead, do the same thing here. Just keep going on those lines. Just like that. So again, I'm not using the wide part of my brush. I'm just turning it sideways. So just like that. So now I've got all of these spaces filled in. So now what I really want to do is I really want to work on my petals. And what's fun for stuff like this is to go ahead and use both white and yellow on the brush at the same time. And what we're going to do is just spread that paint around for now. You don't want to over blend it so that you lose both your colors. I don't want it to be just one color. I want to see both the yellow and little streaks of white here and there. But again, I want to spread that paint around. But you can kind of see it already happening. Where you can see it's a little bit darker right here and then it gets a little bit lighter. That's exactly what I want to see. Just that little fun color change. Now this green should be dry so I should be able to go right up against it. Again, the way that you can tell whether or not a color is dry, I don't know if you can see it, there's a little glisten here so I can tell this spot is still wet here but then the rest of this is nice and dry. So look for those little glistens to see how dry it is. You know, these bigger petals we can use the bigger brush for, so maybe I'm gonna come down here since I've already got my brush loaded. And again, I don't wanna over blend, I don't wanna keep going over it because that's gonna mix those colors together so much that I won't be able to see them. So I want to be able to see a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white. But again, I don't want giant thick lines of paint. So I'm going to make sure to spread it out a little bit. When I come in to these yellow lines too, I can come in with just a touch more white on my brush. So that way, it's nice and light against the yellow. So it's lighter here, and then it's darker here. And that's good, that's what we want. So now I'll go in with a bigger brush to fill in those bigger spaces. Get that brush all nice and cleaned. So I'm just gonna do the same thing, but with a different brush. Load both sides, because we're working in a bigger space now. Get a little bit of white on both sides. So I've got white on both sides. And then my brown wet, my brown's not wet anymore. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna sweep it back and forth. And again, I don't wanna over blend it. I also don't wanna lose that dark yellow that we did right in here. So again, if you need to, Add more white to those spots, and that way it'll be softer up against it.
And when I get to an edge, I'm going to turn my brush so that I get a nice smooth line here. And I want to add some white. Getting a little crazy here. I gotta put my canvas back down. I want to lighten it up as I go around here so I can really see that dark yellow in between. So I'm just adding white because I've already got the yellow on my brush. And the darker color will always overpower the lighter color. So I'm just adding that white. And then I'm just going to keep filling in these spaces. So again, as soon as I get to a line, I'm going to turn my brush so that it's nice and thin. And remember, the harder you press down, the wider line you're going to get. So if I press down as hard as I can, I'm getting that wide of a line. If I have it nice and flat and straightened out, I can get that thin of a line. So it just depends on how you're holding your brush and kind of what you're doing with your brush. So I have a little brown in there, and be careful with that. Now, had that color affected, had it changed my whole petal, remember what I would have done. I would have stopped what I was doing. I would have cleaned off my brush because that would have meant that there was a color in my brush that I didn't want. I would have wiped it away with a paper towel or my finger, depending on how big the space was. I would have let it dry completely. And then, once it was completely dry, I would have gone ahead and painted over it. But the biggest key when you're trying to fix an area that you're unhappy with is to let it dry. If you don't take the time, it's all going to mix and blend together. And then it's going to turn into a color that you don't want. So it's super important to be patient when stuff like that happens. And it will happen because it happens to all of us. Sometimes you just get a little too excited and that's okay. Don't panic if it does. Just remember what to do and it will be all fixed. That's the best part about paint. That's what I love the most about paint is that no matter what I do, if I make a mistake, I can just go right ahead fix it up and as long as I'm patient and I don't get frustrated and I don't lose my cool, I can figure it out, I can think it through and I can get it back exactly how I want it. And my last petal here. So see I've still got those dark spaces of yellow and again if you're not seeing those make sure you use some white to get in there. But remember, if we're blending colors, if you watch the tips and tricks, if we're blending colors, we need both colors to be wet. If they're dry, they're not going to blend the way that we want them to. So if for some reason you try and add white right here and it's already dry, it's just going to kind of scrape around. So what you do is you'd add a little bit of yellow too, and then it'll blend it into a nice soft look. just going back and forth. So we've got that. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to let this dry because what I want to do is I want to add some white here. I want to add some nice accents, some little highlights, stuff like that. And so what I need for it to happen where it'll really stand out is for this to dry because I don't want it to blend. So a lot of times you want things to blend, you want both colors to be wet and they're going to softly come together. But for this, I want it to accent, I want it to pop out. So I want it to be completely dry so that when I put a streak of white on here, all you see is a streak of white. You're not gonna see you know, the yellow blending into it. So I'm gonna do that down here to start because this yellow is already dry. Hmm, purple. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean off this brush. Tap it around on the bottom. Remember to never ever leave your paint brushes in the water. 
that will ruin those paint brushes. And remember to not leave paint sitting on your brush either for an extended period of time because that's going to ruin your brushes. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this tiniest brush again. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of give this part some accents. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start the way that I always do, where I'm going to roll my brush in. But before I do that, let's take a drip of water because we want this to be nice and smooth. So you can see I put just a, just a drip like that. And what's going to happen is I'm going to mix this in and it's just going to make it a little bit thinner here. Mine's got a little yellow to it, no big deal, but I want it to be brighter white than yellow, so just make sure there's not too much yellow in it. But I'm going to make it a little bit thinner so that as I work with it, it glides really, really nice and smooth. So I don't want it to drip. So I know that I've got a good consistency when it's not dripping, but I do see water on my brush, so I'm going to make sure that I get that nice and dry. Now I'm going to go ahead and roll that brush in so I've got it nice and filled on all sides. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give each of these a little outline. Now, again, it depends on what you want to do here. You don't have to make this a perfect outline. In fact, I think you shouldn't make it a perfect outline. I like to feather it where I keep it's almost like sketching. So when you're sketching, you're not taking your pencil and just drawing one straight line, you're sketching like this. So you keep getting different hits in different spaces. It's not one straight line. And that's what I want to do for this, just because that's the style that I want. You can do it with just one straight line. It's totally up to you. This is your painting. And remember, we're all going to have different paintings at the end because we all paint differently. So I'm going to go ahead and keep pushing this around. Just like this. Again, I can see a big thick line of paint, so I'm going to kind of spread that out. got that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix a little bit of white in with that little bit of brown. So I've got both of them on my plate and I'm just going to make it kind of like a little, just going to wave my brush back and forth. So I'm not scrubbing with my brush because that would break my brush, but I'm just going to kind of wave it. And every once in a while I'm going to go back in and add a little more white in, add a little more brown in as I need but I don't want it to be this perfect edge because if we look at flowers, they don't have these perfect edges. So I want it to be kind of haphazard and crazy, just like that. And then you can rinse that brush off, get it nice and dry again. And what I want to do is dip in, maybe just give a little detail to these little petals here. So I'm just making a simple little V. And now again, I don't want it to be a perfect V. You don't even have to make them touch. It's just a little, little accent to give to those little petals, just like that. So you've got just little, very faint marks kind of going on there. Clean that brush off again. And then I'm going to go back in with that biggest brush here. I'm going to make sure it's nice and flat so you can see I can either make it haphazard and crazy which will give us some crazy lines which is not what I want. So instead I'm going to rinse it off. I'm going to dry it off. I'm going to make sure it's nice and flat. So you can see it's nice and flat like that. Okay and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dip into that white. Now again, I want these to be dry, so if yours isn't dry, make sure you pause, take a break, let it dry. You can even take a hair dryer to it, but let it dry, and then you'll come back when it's dry. Now again, to check to see if it's dry, you'll see like a little glisten 
if it's wet. And I can see a couple of streaks here and there, but nothing that I'm too concerned about. I would be really concerned if this whole petal was one big wet petal. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I've got just a little bit of white on here, and I'm going to give it not an outline, but just a little white line. And you can make yours bigger or smaller. Remember it depends on how hard you press on that brush. Just something like that. And then you can even do a couple little streaks down here like that for something pretty. And again, I'm going to start at one spot and go all the way down and simply lift off. And again, if I want to, I can add a couple little spots like that. So then I'm going to come over here. But see how I'm not giving it an outline? I'm not going over those other yellow lines that we had. I'm just giving a little accent. I'm going to do another one on this side. But I want to follow the shape of the petal. And then I'm going to kind of do a little one right in the center there. Remember, at any time during any of these segments, if we're going too fast or you just want to take your time or you need to take a break, let's say mom told you to put your laundry away, you can go ahead and step away for a few minutes, just press pause. Just remember, you don't want to step away too long because your paints will dry out. So if you step away for an extended period of time, make sure that your brushes are nice and cleaned out again and nice and dried off. They're not sitting in that water because you'll be disappointed if you come back and you can't use them. So right here, one more spot, come down, simply lift off. And then give a couple little spots just like that. And then last but not least, I'm going to go ahead and do it just a smidge on this side right up top here. So not very far at all. And do a little bit more down here. Just like that. So now at this point is when you can look at everything and decide if you want to touch anything up or change anything. So what I'm going to do is I see a spot that's been driving me crazy and so I want to make sure that I fix that while I have my paints out already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this thin brush again. I'm going to dip right into my yellow, a smidge into my white. And see if you look real close, you can see I don't have a very straight line here or here. So I want to take this and I want to just go right over it very carefully. And you just need to decide how much yellow and how much white you need. So you're just going to go, you're going to kind of guess and then as you paint it you'll see if it's too light or if it's too dark. If it's too dark, you're going to add a little bit more white, and if it's too light, you're going to add a little bit more yellow. So there we go. So now you can go through and you can do any touch-ups that you want, uh, but I hope you have lots of fun. Make sure that you clean out these brushes. Nice. Dry them off. Get them all ready so that you can do the next segment whenever you're ready. Alright, see you next time!